So hello everyone and welcome back to the One Point Safety Show with myself, Scott Hartley, and my co-host, Scouse Andy. How are you, Scouse? You alright, mate? Yeah, I'm good, man. Really excited yeah. for this pod today, mate. Really excited. So am I. So am I. We are joined by Atlanta's finest YouTuber and sensation street scores, Rico from um, Atlanta. How are you, mate? You okay? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm great. Thanks for having me on. It's starting to get really hot here, so I'm trying to stay inside as much as I can. <laughs> but, man, football, man, we draft season, super excited. It's only a week Can't away, wait, one man. week away now. That's us when we're just, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what we do, seeing these college uh, superstars come out of the draft, see where they end up, and hopefully that board falls right and we get some uh, really good talent in this draft. But we will get your thoughts on that a bit more. So this is week three then, ladies and gents, of our um, US takeover of the show. We're doing a month where we have uh, various pe- uh, podcasters and YouTubers on, uh, people in the know. And we get them on from uh, their show. They-, they get them to promote their show a little bit and uh, show us really how it's done, to be Thanks. honest. Exactly. Mm-hmm. There's been a little bit of uh, news this week then. So Josh Harris's bid um, for $6.5 billion has been sent to the NFL League of League offices. Uh, and it looks like it's on track to be completed by May um, owners meeting. Forbes published an account and they said that there's 17 um, pit buyers within this, this group that they've got on. Joe Gibbs was rumoured to be in this group, but it now looks like he's not um, being in that group and he's got more of an advisory role. Um, but it looks like all things considered, the sale is going through. So firstly, what's your thoughts on that then, Scouse? What do you think? Are we, are we, are we heading in the right direction? Oh, 100%. I mean, you, you, you can't be worse than what we've just had from Dan Snyder for the last 20 plus years. You know, it cannot be worse. So, I mean, well, maybe that other guy, <laughs> Brian Davis, maybe he's a bit more ropey. Yeah. <laughs> he we'll, is come ropey him, we'll come on to we'll him. come on bit, to him. But yeah, but, but from these guys, they know what they're doing. They're experienced. And, and, and I can't wait, man. I just cannot wait to get the sign so I haven't got to talk about Dan Snyder ever again. Yeah, agree. Thoughts, Rico? What's your thoughts on the sale? Yes, I'm just so happy for this to almost be over with. I would have loved for it to happen well before the draft so Josh Harris can already start to have his um, – put his fingerprints on the organization by then. And um, and then the breakdown of everything is really interesting. The fact that Josh Harris is like 30%, Mitchell Rails is 14 Magic Johnson is f- uh, 4 or 5%. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And then there's like uh, – it's, it's just so many other people involved to where we see Josh Harris as the face of it, but he's 30%. There's another 70% owned by other people, so it's – Kind of like a republic in a way. At least I'm glad it's not the old Dan Snyder monarch uh, dictatorship that we had going on. I'm glad that it is more spread out and things like that. Um, maybe Josh Harris is the last say, um, but I'm glad that a lot of people will have influences. And of course, Magic Johnson is just one of those guys that even if he doesn't have that much power, him just being involved gives people hope. Um, and so I'm really excited about that alone. So do you think then that, um, I'll ask you this question as well, do you think that Forbes, when they valued it in August at 5.6, um, I was getting 6 billion. I mean, I know there's that 250 billion, uh, sorry, 250 million that's going to be paid back over a certain number of years. I think it's two years, isn't it? It's going back to Dan Snyder after the sale. Um, but the group's been told they must pay 5.8 billion. Do you think that's a, a, a around where we saw it going to be? Because obviously in the early stages, people were saying it was going to go for 7, 8 billion, that sort of price. Um, Only if Jeff Bezos was very serious about it. And then maybe people trying to outbid each other, maybe it would have gotten to that point. But um, I, I could just see other than Jeff Bezos, who had all the money himself, everybody else was going to have to be a group of people. And they were probably going to try to get somewhere around the bare minimum of what Dan Snyder is asking for. Um, so I didn't really see it going too high. Let Jeff Bezos wanted to be involved. And now we're hearing that um, he's more interested in the Seahawks anyway. So he's not even really involved with the commander. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah, 100%. Um, I, I, as Scout said before, for me, it's just... When I, I've my fandom, my, I only started becoming a fan in 2012, really. I nailed my colours to the mast. So looking at it from that standpoint, I've seen nothing but Dan Snyder and nothing, you know, one good season, <laughs> the RG3 season, and that's pretty much it, you know. Not much else going on other than that. So you didn't miss a lot before that, that Yeah, well, well, I know, I know. I know, I know, slim, I know. slim pickings, man, slim pickings. Slim pickings, exactly that, exactly <laughs> that. But yeah, um, in other news then, there's only been two other real bits of news. I mean, Brian Davis was on... Uh, he said that they had a legit seven billion, but where the money's coming from, it's extremely questionable. We've seen 
a bit of Twitter beef coming out saying that he owed me three million and actually <laughs> he, I ended up with four. And then he had that Junkies interview, which I don't know if you've had the chance to, to listen to the Junkies interview. I listened to it yesterday. Um, somehow I got through to the Odyssey app, which isn't available in the UK. But anyway, I got it on and I listened to it. And my word, it, it I mean, is. I've got white people money. I mean, <laughs> it's coming from the Middle East. I don't know where this money's coming from. <laughs> said he's worth 50 billion. 50 like... <laughs> billion. I mean, that's more than Oprah Winfrey and put and, and various other A-listers put together. I mean, I mean no, I, come on now. I mean, I, I think now. Brian Davis got the same amount of money as me. Do you know what I mean? Me just walking around going, you know what? I've got 50 billion. You know what I mean? It's outrageous. Do you know what I mean? It's absolutely outrageous. <laughs> the, the guy's a joker, man. He's dodgy it's, as hell. Dodgy it's as the hell. Worst, the worst pyramid scheme in the world, isn't it? That's what we've got to <laughs> yeah. look at. I, I, I don't know. I mean, look, fair play. And to be fair, for and to be fair yeah, th- think about this, though, as well, is that Bezos and all the other guys, they had to sign an NDA yeah. if they were going to bid on the team. And this guy's coming around, going every talk show host in the world, going around, going, I, I, I bid for this and all that. It can't be. He, he can't physically have been involved because he couldn't have signed an NDA. Because he didn't have the money. The guy's a joker. The guy's just trying to get some fame from, from yeah. being a ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you I think agree. this is just the, madness, madness, madness. Just the publicity play then, Rico? Oh. Do you think that's what it is? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, yeah. another point I had as well was like, okay, if he's not even worth a billion and he has enough people investing in him to where he can put a $7 billion bid, what do they need him for? Like what? Why? 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 Is it, he's just a face at that point. Are they just that shady? Like if these people really exist, and I'm just imagining hooded figures, silhouette things behind them, like some Illuminati type of stuff, villain type of looking stuff. Um, if they if they really have this money, why do they need him? Like if he's not contributing much anyway. So it's just like even if the money is there, these people must be really shady. For them to say, Brian Davis, you be the face. Even as crazy as you are, we prefer for people to see you than us. So the whole situation is terrible, top to bottom. Yeah, I agree. I completely it, agree it, with it, that. it just reeks of Dan Snyder. <laughs> it just reeks of it. <laughs> it really does, doesn't it? <laughs> just get to stay away, man. Stay away from my franchise, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I agree with you completely. Um, So the only other bit of news we've really had this week was who came in for a top 30 visit. So we had Anton Harrison, our uh, offensive tackle, um, who I really like. I rate him quite highly. I think he's probably one of the only legit left tackles that are in this draft that are going out there that you wouldn't have to move. Uh, Defensive end, Miles Murphy, uh, and a defensive back, Quan Martin. But the real story and talking point was Hendon Hooker came in this week quarterback out of Tennessee, and he was taken out for dinner by the team and then the following day had a top 30 visit. So do you put much stock into that then, Scouse? I mean, you got to put some stock into it, I mean, especially if you're whining and dining some guy compared to the rest that you're not doing that to. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. so it so must have some love for the dude. So, uh, But for me, if, if, if we take him anywhere near the first two, two rounds, I, I, won't, I won't be impressed. But this guy will end up being probably a second round pick, and I'm worried that we're going to pick him in the second round. I, 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 he's, I like him, but I just don't think we should be picking him in the second round at all. So I'm a bit concerned about this one, really. The ACL injury in the is is a bit of a worry and not being able to start. Yeah, he gets it. He's probably at least there. He's no, he's a good player. October, I'm not saying he's not, but you know, he's a good quarterback. But the thing is, like, if, if, are you all in on how or are you not? That's and it. And we're gonna, That's I'm, it. I'm gonna, I'm we're gonna find out, aren't we? Let's face it, we're gonna find out the draft if we pick Hooker in the second, or even late if we drop down and come late first, and we have to go and pick him there. Then you know we're not into Hal, so Hal's gonna be on the bench, probably third string, and then you're gonna have uh, probably Hooker or um, Brissett uh, start because you wouldn't. Why would you start Hal just to uh, basically like if, if you already if you if you just literally drafted Hooker? It doesn't make any sense to me. So. I mean, I'm I'm in on how, so I don't really want I don't want Hendon Hooker. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I saw Twitter um, a bit of Twitter um, articles there, and then saying that we're really high on him according to the NFL insiders. So it's good it'll be I mean, very good interesting, player. very interesting to see. What's your thoughts, Rico, on Hendon Hooker? I completely agree. Um, I mean, the only thing I can really add is the, the last time we took somebody out to dinner, we hired him as our offensive coordinator, assistant head coach. So maybe there is some stock to that, but I completely agree. I am not really interested in getting him. Maybe if he slides to the third or fourth, maybe. 
Um, but I just feel like there, there's too much positional value with other talent, like corner, offensive line that we need to address. And I'm also in on Sam Howell. I think you at the very least do everything you can to um to, to give him the best chance to win this year. If it doesn't work out, then move on. Um, but yeah, I'm I don't see how Hendon Hooker helps us win games this year at all. Mm-hmm. 100%. Oh, so- I'm just wondering there, mate. Um, what is there a realistic pick in the mid rounds that that could make an impact, like like a, like a, like a Cam Curl did that kind of like big impact? You, you got any guys like kind of for this draft? You think mm, that'd be perfect for us? Matt Dayon Henley, the linebacker, he transferred to Washington State this past season. Um, he played receiver like his his entire collegiate career, moved to linebacker now, so he's still raw. You know, still has his little mental li- um lapses every now and then, but. Um, I thought maybe we could get him third, fourth, just a f- couple of months ago. But now you have Chris Sims out here oh. saying he's his number one linebacker. And it's just like the cats out the bag. Like everybody knows now, Dayon Henley is a good potential linebacker, first round talent. So that would have been my number one answer. But um, I like Julius Brents. I think he's basically like a Benjamin St. Juice clone that maybe we could potentially get in like the third round you know third round is our sweet spot Terry McLaurin Tonio Gibson Brian Robinson Benjamin St. Juice himself we'll see what happens with Deami Brown um guys like that so um I, I I'm just gonna automatically be high on whoever we take in the third round period just off of our history I'm just gonna give them the benefit of the doubt at this point but if it's somebody like Julius Brent I would be very happy about that and then lastly I really like the potential of Alex Forsyth, the interior offensive lineman from Oregon. We know Chase Roulier has the injury issues. And maybe we technically brought Nick Gates in to be a potential starting center or guard if we need him to be. But um, I like him potentially towards the end of the third round, maybe early fourth. And what do you think about, I mean, off the, it's not really on the script, so it's pretty on the spot. But what about kind hmm. of um, like Sean Michael Smith maybe in the second? What do you think yeah. about that? Because I, I like him, him, man. I like him, man. And 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 I say, as you mentioned, centers. All our centers are injured. They've all got inj- bad history, bad injury histories. All three of them. So it's kind of like we need to we, we need to look in the center. So hundred percent on what you're saying about kind of that other chap you just mentioned. And, yeah, uh, like, to add like to that, that even um, just the fact that that John Michael Schmitz, um, um, he could just play. He can play left guard if you need him to be. Because right now, Ron Rivera saying it's just between Chris Paul and Sadiq Charles. And I don't have a world of confidence in that. So even if he's not ready to start at center just yet, he could be potentially be our starting left guard as well. I think that would be a great pickup. Yeah, I like the um, the center out of um, Ohio State's Luke Whipler, is it? I can't remember his surname. Whipler. Is it Whipler? Whipler. Yeah. Whipler. It Whipler? I think so. I think so. He's yeah. very good as well. He's very athletic as well. I really like rate him, but I, I think they'd probably go for a guard. I mean, I, I, I'm going I'm, I'm to shout it out before anybody else does. <laughs> go on, mate. Schmidt, Schmidt ends up being as good as Jason Kelsey. Wow. That is a hot Okay. Take. Okay. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Is a hot and look, take. By the time his career has ended, I bet you'd be able to be com- comparable to him. All right. We'll see. Okay. We'll we'll see on that one. So O line cornerback at sixteen, or do you trade back, Rico? What 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 do you think and take best player available? My logically, I'm I'm leaning towards trade back because I feel like if anything, last year I didn't want to trade back, and they traded back, and it worked out very well for us. John Dotson, I believe, we ended up getting Sam Howell and Cole Turner from those picks as well. Um, and then this draft going into into this one, I want to trade back. So I think it, we're even more likely to trade back this draft than we were last year. So I think it would happen. But if we don't, I think but um, out of any of the positions that make the most sense, I would say offensive line, only because there are some really good corners, but this is a very deep cornerback draft. I feel like if you don't take one in the first, you could take one in the second or third, and they may end up being almost just as good as those other guys. Where I feel like offensive line, you may want to go ahead and jump on those guys, especially the tackles or um, like we were talking about with John Michael Schmitz, one of those guys. Um, you take them in the first and don't look back, in my opinion. Yeah, I think the drop offs, the, the drop offs, very slight in the cornerback um, that are coming out this mm. year between between what is assessed as a first round, second round, third round, and so on. But there is a, a significant drop off in talent once you get past the first five or so offensive linemen or tackles, whichever way you want to, if you want to group them like that. Or if you want to go interior, or uh, or mm-hmm. just in the tackle class. So yeah, I agree with you completely. There, I totally understand. So last w- w- question from us to you, really, Rico, is you've got over fifteen thousand subscribers now um, on your show. As uh, we said before we started recording, I was probably there when Rico <laughs> was on about two hundred. 
Um, exactly. Was, yeah, man, I remember the days with you and Juan Gotti just just chopping it up. It was it was it was great, man. I've been following you for a good a good four to four years ish now. I think. Um, have you adapted um, yourself in any way, or do you think that where do you think your channel is going to go in the future? Um, it's been a lot of things. It's like improving camera quality, audio quality, having to really invest and get a better mic and. Um, even, you know, some people at first, my intros were too long. So I shortened it and, and people kept saying it was too long. I, then people started saying, maybe it's a little too short. Now we missed the older ones. And then people like the background music that I have. Some people were like, you know, maybe change the intro every now and then, but the one at the end, keep that forever. And it's just like, I try to take in as much advice as possible and see how everybody's feeling because I know just. Um, just me being me, I, I typically don't agree with the general consensus with a lot of things. So I got to keep my ear out to see like how everybody's feeling and I kind of cater towards that. But don't change too much because I still want to be me. Um, but then also, of course, following trends and whatever's going on, make sure you're like one of the first to be on it and things like that. It's a lot of like, um, oh, one big one. I used to write out my entire video script like 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 almost essay format, like I'm reading every word I'm almost saying. Now I have like an outline with points. That way I'm not spending three hours before I even hit the record button. Now I just kind of go and then I record, then I edit. But like way back, like less than 7,000, 6,000 subscribers, I used to literally write out almost every word in every one of my videos. Like literally, I could basically copy and paste that and like produce an article out of it if I wanted to, but now it's more like just your points here and there and like an outline and then I just go. So it's, it's, it's saved me a lot of time, a lot of headache. And um, it's, it's really been more productive. Do you still do the sports chat as well, where you're just talking about other things other than the commanders? Because obviously I see your Sunday calling shows. They're really cool. They're really good. Where you, Thank you. I thought that was a great um, invention, to be honest with you, because you can open it up <laughs> to anybody. They can call in, have their rant for two minutes, cut them off, move on. But yeah, man, it's um, you're doing really well and really appreciate you being on here because it's great to have one of the originals and the goats in on the show. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. We've just we've just got a few fan questions here really for you. So um, do you want to take the first one is uh, Scousers asked me, (laughs) why am I on the show? Well, (laughs) you asked me. (laughs) I want to know why you want uh, my show. It's my show. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right, all right. I see where this is going. You're only two hours down the road, mate. I'll get in the car. Yeah, yeah. Come on then. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So his name is first. No, 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 I get it. It's cool. It's cool. It's a show. Um, we'll, we'll trademark it. Um so Darren H in our uh, in our UK WhatsApp groups asked, it's all about the draft. Um first pick plans. He's saying Darnell Wright at 16. What's your thoughts on Darnell Wright at 16, Rico? I'm one of those people that's a big Darnell Wright fan. I know he's played far more right tackle than left tackle. I feel like he could transition to left tackle if you want him to. Probably end up cutting Charles Leno, save quite a bit of money moving forward. I mean, I don't think a lot of people realize it, but right now we don't have enough cap space to even pay our draft class right now. (laughs) Within this next week, somebody's got to go. Like somebody. So I can see that being like a Charles Leno. That would save you enough money to pay those guys, have a little left over to, for whatever you may want to spend it on. But um, even ignoring what we have on our offensive line, Charles Leno, whoever, I'm just a really big fan of Darnell Wright. I feel like wherever he goes, he's going to succeed. His only problem is that he plays to the level of his competition because Will Anderson even said it himself. It, that was his hardest matchup in his collegiate career. But then at the same time, Tennessee will go against some random no-name school and then Darnell Wright's making weird mistakes that he wasn't even making against a top potential top five, top 10 pick in Will Anderson. Mm -hmm. So I feel like once he receives the proper coaching, enough attention is put on him. Um, Right now, we don't even technically have an offensive lines coach right now. But, you know, once we are able to put that time in with him, I think he could be really good. And I feel like the one thing you can't take away from him is that he's the strongest offensive lineman in this draft class, in my opinion. And those are tools you can work with. And then he has good footwork, um, especially for a guy his size. Um, I see. I think you take him at 16, don't look back. Some people feel like he could fall to the late first, early second. But if you're that high on him, as, as high as I am on him, you go ahead and take him. And we'll figure it out. I mean, we don't want to immediately replace Andrew Wiley after we just brought him in to basically be our starting right tackle. So I guess you get rid of Charles Leno or you shuffle things around for Darnell Wright, in my opinion. 
Yeah, completely agree with you. I think he's one of on my board. He's I think yeah, tackle number number two. I think um, I've got Peter Skoronsky just slightly higher than him, but he projects more as a guard. So if you're going to go off it just just as a pure tackle, yeah, he's probably the best one out there. I mean, a, a polygon, a polygon powers, powers, uh, powers Johnson, Paris Johnson, yeah, as I one, agree. as yeah. one really, and then, love his footwork. Mm, oh yeah, he's smooth man, isn't he? Really smooth, really really quick. Um, yeah, so he'd be my number one. Then obviously, yeah, I think Wright is my number two as well. Um, also, I do like Anton Harrison, but he's, I like he's Harrison number three too, as well. Man. So um, I, I'd be happy with any of those guys. Any of them? Yeah, any, any of them, please. Same. Same. <laughs> any of them, please. <laughs> Absolutely. So Simon Thurston asks, with Josh Harris, uh, the Josh Harris bid looking promising and conversations already taking place over a new stadium. What type of stadium should we be looking for? I.e. a dome, indoor, outdoor, like SoFi, or a purely outdoor? And then he's talked about grass and turf as well. So quite an interesting question there, Scouse. I'll give you that one. <laughs> what do you want to see? Yeah, yeah. What do you want to see? What do I want to see? I want, I want to see state of the art. I want to see the best, yeah. the best in the game. That's what I want to see. I want to see, I want to see grass. I think it's, it's much more, it's better for the players. Most players do actually prefer to play on grass. There is evidence out there that there is less non-contact injuries on grass compared to turf as well. So definitely, we're definitely a grass. And what I would like, I would like a retractable roof. I would like so you can have it open and close it. I mean, that's what I would like because um, obviously, you know, the grass with, 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 with where we are, we can have some good weather, some bad weather. Um, and I just think like you know, and plus, if we have a retractable roof, we can get a Super Bowl as well. You know, so yeah, man, that's exactly it. Something that's going to give a Super Bowl, definitely. That's one hundred percent agree with that. So, so Rico, the pod father, Kyle Ronick himself from the Burgundy Zone, he's asked, <laughs> where does Washington's top three coaching positions rank in the NFL as a whole? And he's talking head coach, OC, and DC. That's a really interesting topic. Eric <laughs> Bieniemy is all ceiling. We got to see where the floor is, but I mean, he could be the guy that takes us yeah. over the top. I feel like Jack DeRio is pretty underrated what he did with that defense, with all of the injuries that we had, and they still went out there and produced the way that they did, um, especially in that Cowboys game where, I mean, Jonathan Allen, Cameron Curl, Cole Holcomb, Jamin Davis, none of those guys were playing. I, I mean, we were out there with Percy Butler, Derek Forrest, no Benjamin St. Juice. It was it was chaotic, and they still went out there and played the way that they played against the Cowboys. I just feel like he's been the glue keeping everything together. Ron Rivera, love his personality, hate his time management. But, I, I mean, his philosophy and free agency, you know, it's been working. I'm not a bargain bin shopping type of guy. But it's worked. I mean, Charles Leno has given us fantastic value. J.D. McKissick before the neck injuries and even like Eric Flowers that's not here anymore. But like all of these cheaper guys that we end up signing, they end up outplaying their contracts, even Logan Thomas before the injury. Um, and so like Ron Rivera, at the very least, player personnel wise, as a motivator, a guy that demands respect, a guy that runs practices hard the way that we should have been doing under Jay Gruden and things like that. Um, I feel like they all contribute different things. Eric Bieniemy now is going to be really fun because what we've been missing is creativity and you know, ingenuity, adjustments, things like that. And apparently Eric Bieniemy is like one of the greatest at that. We got to see him do it without having Pat Mahomes or Travis Kelsey at his disposal. But if he can do that here, this coaching staff could be elite. Um, I mean, that's really what took the Giants over the top. The Giants aren't a very talented team. They improved their coaching staff and looked how um, well they played this past season, yeah. exceeded all expectations. Yeah. Um, I feel like we could do a similar thing with Eric Bien. Couldn't agree more with you. Couldn't agree more with you. So question question for me, Juice, uh, Juice, Juice Delicious even on Twitter <laughs> asks, don't forget my clotted cream. <laughs> I won't forget your clotted cream, mate. I'll bring you some scones <laughs> as well. No problem at all. And then uh, C. Henry, so C. Henry 313, Detroit in the house, says, are you Sam I am or are you a Jacoby guy? Isn't, and, is it, and is it playoffs or bust? And what do you think the new management team stroke ownership's top two priorities are? So we'll answer that um, question as a whole. So I'll go to you first, Scouse. So it's are you in or all in on Sam or Jacoby Brissett? Or, well, as, um, I mentioned, as, I, as I mentioned before, I, I'm in. I'm in on Sam Howell. So yeah, uh, you know he's got a body of work in college. Um, you know, very impressed with with what he did 
And even though he had a down season, his, his final season, he had, he had no weapons. He had nobody there. He was, he was on his own. And he's and then he changed his whole game and ran for like double what he normally would run for in yardage and touchdowns from rushing TDs. I mean, the guy just puts a team on his back and just knows what he's got to do. It's as simple as that. And and, and that's why I'm a big fan of him. That's why I'm a big fan of his. And look, look what he did against uh, Dallas with half a team, like Rico mentioned before. That's absolutely dominated the playoff team. He was actually fighting for the division title at that point. I'm just just, yeah. just took him apart. He made one big error, but that's all he made, and he learned from it. He didn't make that mistake again. That's what I want to see from my from my young quarterback. You can make mistakes, sure, everyone does. As long as you learn from it, it doesn't happen next time. I reckon. I reckon we've got an absolute stu- absolute stud. I really do. I think. I think we we got this guy in the fifth round, and he should no one near have been anywhere near that. He should have been second round minimum. Yeah, he was definitely, definitely projected as a second rounder, wasn't he? And then, Minimum, you know, yeah. some people had him like QB3 on their boards, I remember coming out th- last year. I mean, it's funny, isn't it? When we're, doing mock, when we're doing mock drafts, I watched Rico's mock draft and he had a sneaky pick was Anthony Richardson before anybody knew about him. And then the next thing you know, <laughs> he's on everyone's board and he might even go two. You know what I mean? People are talking about him going as, as, Man. as second overall. Just, just, Man. I mean, I'm, I'm a Gators fan. I'm a Gators fan from, from college. And to be fair, he's not that good. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> he is not that good. Trust me, you'll find out. He'll be like a Carson Wentz. He'll look good for a second, and all of a sudden he'll be awful. And that's exactly what he is. So he'll, he'll break your heart. You'll think like he's going to be this, <laughs> this amazing guy because his, his, his genetics and his athleticism is unbelievable. It's off the charts. But his mm. accuracy, mate, is awful. And he will he will, he will, he will break your heart, I'm telling you. Whoever, whoever drafts him, he'll break your heart. <laughs> So Rico, we'll get let you answer this last bit. So, what's your top two priorities for the new ownership coming in then? Um, immediately, of course, player personnel. Um, like again, after the draft, if we depending on who we take, Charles Leno might may need to go. We need to get the restructuring some contracts. Chase Roulier should not be costing us as much as he is right now. Logan Thomas should not be costing us as much as he is right now. And we'll definitely see after the draft, of course, who we take if we take another center, if we take another tight end or whatever higher in the draft, but uh, we need to come in and immediately to do that. And I didn't need them to go head first into whatever we're going to do with the stadium. I agree with scouts. Can we please get a retractable roof? I'm spoiled because I'm in Atlanta, the Mercedes Benz stadium that the Falcons play in warm day, roof open. Perfect. When it's cold, even if it's just a little too windy, they close it. And it's just like the perfect weather conditions. Um, and, and so I just really hope, um, I, I'm just hoping just, first of all, I feel like when a new stadium is made, you're supposed to outdo the previous new stadium. And I just feel like even just that standard alone, we just need to take it to another level. Um, so I'm really hoping that they dive head first into that, figure out where we're going to put it. Um, I, there was a report that Josh Harris and his group were already um, peeking into the DC area, potentially like making some calls, seeing if that would be possible. I know a lot of fans would prefer that. Um, so we'll see, I think, but I definitely think player personnel, um, and then stadium, we, we can worry about Ron Rivera. I'm thinking give Ron Rivera and Martin Mayhew this final year to prove themselves, yeah. especially if Sam Lyle works out. So that's not necessarily a priority for me, but those two are my, probably my top right now. And then the name brand, I love Red Wolves as much as everybody else, but we don't need to go through this again immediately. So, um, yeah, that's definitely not a priority either. Cool. Well, we cannot thank you enough for being on the show. Honestly, we are massive supporters of yours. Yep, We've seen fun. you obviously on uh, other mm-hmm. podcasts that you're on with like Kyle and the Burgundy Zone. And, you know, we really, really appreciate you being on with us um, and taking the time to be with us. If you just want to plug your channel, plug your social media handles. That would be fantastic, Rio. Oh, yeah, of Rico. course, man. Thank you for having Rico. me. Call you Rio. I, don't know what's <laughs> I know, you get <laughs> it. It happens is, a lot. Sorry. Dude. It happens a lot. You're definitely not the first. I don't even hear it anymore. <laughs> but um, but thank you, man. Thanks for having me again. Let me know whenever I, I'm having fun. Um, shouts out to y'all. You can find me Street Scores, S-T-R-E-E-T-S-C-O-R-E-S. I guess that's a better way of doing it. Um, and man, just shouts out to y'all from I mean, I'm pretty sure y'all hear it all the time, but like even just the time zone difference. I spent a semester in Europe one 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 of my years in college. And, like, I gave up on 8 p.m. games. Like, well, 8 p.m. Eastern time games. Like, if it, was, if it wasn't the Commanders, well, the Redskins at the time back then, I wasn't watching it. I wasn't even going to try to watch it. So just m- big shouts out to y'all for being dedicated enough to stick through that because I couldn't do it, me personally. I guess because I'm spoiled. <laughs> but when I got there, anything 
after a 4 p.m. game, I wasn't even going to try. Yeah, them, uh, them Thursday night yeah, footballs <laughs> and the Monday night footballs are terrible. <laughs> we, we, Especially we, we when we've been so things. bad as well. Especially when we've been so bad on, on primetime games. Yeah, man. It's like, oh, really make, yeah. Do you really, really want to stay up to one in the morning just for it to start and then see us get battered? Uh, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> Joey, so we've I'm got the stupid we, we are. <laughs> a week from today, we've got this happening, Scouts. It's one AM start, isn't it? Yeah, one AM start for the remember. draft. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, man, one AM. So oh. six in the morning, five or six in the morning, something like that. It finishes something like that. Yeah. So ah. I think odd, oddly enough, <laughs> odd, oddly enough, Rico. This time last year, we had a draft party up at Edinburgh. So there's quite a lot of Commanders fans got together. There was probably about fifteen of us, I think, in the end. And then we didn't even see the last four picks because the casino was kicking us out because it was the only place we could watch it. (laughs) So uh, (laughs) that is crazy. uh, I need to think about that. I think I think it finished at half six, didn't it? In the end, I think last year. Yeah. Yeah, So six in the morning. Six in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Six in the morning. So (laughs) big, big time differences. But it's all all worth it in the end. But yeah, shout out to you. Thank you for being on with us. We really appreciate it, man. And um, anytime you're welcome here. Anytime. Just let me know. I will do. Thanks, Rico. Take care, mate. Cheers. Take care, mate. Take care. Just listen to the man. Just listen to him, honestly. Yeah, just listen to Rico, man. He is the man. He is the man, indeed. We will be joined by our second guest soon, um, hopefully, um, popping through here. We've got uh, Juice from the Red Zone in the lab coming up. So, um, yeah, it's it's been a really good week. Really interesting to listen to Rico's thoughts there. And if you haven't subscribed to his YouTube channel, please give it a like and subscribe. Honestly, he feels I can just sit there listening to him for 20 minutes and I've got everything I need to know off Twitter articles instead of you mm-hmm. searching, having a look at what's going on in the news. Save yourself the scroll and just listen to his channel and he'll tell you everything there is to know. So, yeah, really good guy. And I can't thank him enough for being on with us. Um, so Scouse, um, anything else happening? Let's let's talk about draft. Let's talk about that. We're a week away. We're going to do our own mock draft next week. We'll find a mock draft, the simulator. We'll probably yeah, yeah. go pick. We'll probably go pick by pick. I think the way yep. to do it for us, I think, is going to be a. Are we going to do it as what's the consensus pick, or, or do you want to do it as what would you do as the GM? What do you think's better? Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's the I think that's the better way. It gives you your flavor on it. Then you know. So I think so. We'll do it from like what you or I think what they're going to take at that point. Are they? And you can even do if you really wanted to go into a bit of detail and say we're going to uh, maybe like you know are we going to trade down but for this team or that team or you know what I mean. So might even try and look into that if there's anything like that going on as well. So yeah, um, exactly. So we've got some other fan questions here um, with us at the moment. So Commander Viscount has asked, who do you think gets the most sacks in 2023? Chase, Allen, Payne, Sweat. What's your thoughts? Well, I think I think it's the way it's good. The way it is at the moment, unless we see a different, complete different Chase Young, it's going to be the one Payne. He's going. He's going to be the, lead, the the main sack guy. You know, Jonathan Allen is will get his sacks, but he won't get as many as Payne. Um, he, he's 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 they're both slightly different in how they they rush the passer and. And and Deron Payne tends to rush the pass a little bit better than, than John Allen, I think, and um, and I think that that's where it's going to be. Unless we see, unless we see like a an unbelievable Chase Young come out, and it's going to be Deron Payne, really, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think I actually, I'm going to go the other way. I think it's contract time for Montez Sweat, and I think Montez yeah. Sweat gets there. He's been very, very close. The pressures were unbelievable last year, highest pressure rate of a edge rusher in the whole of the NFL but he just couldn't get to the end of it to get that sack. I think he tweaks that up in preseason um, OTAs. And yeah, I think he, he gets there in the end. I think he, he rushes, rushes and I think he gets to the quarterback. Gets I mean, what's, sacks. I mean, what's the, the best year he's had from sacks? Is, is it about seven? About that, seven, seven or eight. Seven or eight. Yeah. Seven or eight. You know, it's... Gets double figures. It's good. Don't, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's decent. But with this whole line, mate, sorry, sorry, this D-line, he should be doing a lot better. Personally. Yeah, well, following on from that, uh, Commander Viscount also asked, how many do you see them getting as a group? So everyone all put together. I mean, are we including the rotational pieces, your Smith-Williams, your Obadas? I probably wouldn't if we just go off them four and we say Payne, Sweat, Allen, Young. What we, what do you think? What are you saying as a, as a whole? I mean, how many did Deron Payne end up on 13 last year? 12, 12 and a half, I think it was. 12 yeah. and a half. What was... Yeah. Um, what was 
Alan. I think Alan was what, eight or nine as well. Eight or nine, yeah, something like that, yeah. Uh, so I'm going Is to go... 40 too much to ask, do you think? 40 between between mm. all four of them. Yeah. I th- I, th- I, th- I think I think that's doable if they if one they stay healthy and two chase and sweat as you said, no, just that extra one percent from, from Montez. You know. So what would you say I is think, a good season then for the whole D line? 35? I mean, yeah, I, I think I, th- I, th- I think that's okay. I th- as you say, I think it's 40. I think that 40. should be I think that should be what like that should be, should be the aim as a group. Do you know what I mean? Minimum 40. I think personally, they're probably all saying I can get ten sacks a year. That's what they're probably looking at, aren't they? If I can get to double figures, well, great. Well, good pass rushes. That's what they say, don't they? They say, yeah, you know, I, figures, I should be getting yeah. double. I should be getting double figures every season, and they should. If you if you're a quality player, a quality rusher, you will. So I got another one here. Then I've got another question here for you. Then so, what is the most underrated positional group on the team, and why? The most underrated. Yeah. What do you think is like the most underrated hmm. group on the team? Hmm, interesting. And the only reason um, I ask this question, Scouts, is because I'm thinking purely about the draft. And I'm thinking, yeah. are we going to what position group are we going to draft that we don't think is obviously, you know, needed, or the fan base goes, ah, we don't need that 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 at all. Um, what are you? Well, I, th- I think I think if you take a, if you if you take it, well, I think if, if you take a um, thing from from Jesse. Well, running mm-hmm. back, I think Good running shit, back's yeah. one, yeah, because uh, you know, we've got two quality backs, and you know, the third one's okay as well. You know, the, the, the third guy, Jonathan Williams, yeah. yeah, very good as well. He's not bad as well, but, yeah. You know, so, so when people look into the draft, you know, it's in people are showing, oh, we should be getting Bijan and all this, so that tells me that the fan base, quite a lot of them, still don't think our running back group's any good, you know, so that's my problem, yeah. I agree. It's uh, it's one of them. And I, I for me, I'm going to go tight end. I know it sounds weird, but I think we've got three. I listened to Logan Paulson and he's trying to he convince me, really. He was listening. He was on Kimes podcast and I listened to him. And obviously this coming from a guy who, you know, he's played in the league. He understands what the, the tangibles are for a tight end, what you can and what you should and shouldn't get out of them. We've got three really good pass catching tight ends. Amari, Amani Rogers is really underrated. Curtis Hodges was a standout in the last training camp and OTAs. Uh, Cole Turner was the guy everyone was talking about free training camp and then just never really showed up. Um, obviously had injury as well, which didn't help. John Bates is your main blocker. You know, we've got him there and his blocking obviously dropped off. And whether that was down to scheme and we won't say his name because you've got to put a pound in the swear jar. Mm. But he wasn't used in the same way he was used the previous season where, you know, John Bates as a rookie was the top blocker in the entire NFL at tight end. And then we've got Logan Thomas. And if he can get anywhere near what he was like previous, you know, as the big bodied red zone threat, I think we've got a really underrated group there at tight end. I mean, yes, we probably will address tight end in this draft. We most likely will draft someone in there. But I think it's a really underrated group already. So I'm not sure if you do need anyone in there. And it will obviously depend on what Washington's big board is like on the day. You know, if there's a person there who's best player available, who's got a lot of upside and was rated highly, you know, maybe a, a second rounder falls to the fourth round and you add him in the second on your board, you run up with that card and you take it. So for me, I think that's my underrated um, position is tight end. And you went for running back. So interesting, interesting call there. Um, so yeah, interesting call. Um, well, I mean, it's a shame. It's a shame that, um, the tight ends that they're all not like all five, all four, or five of those dudes are all like in one guy, <laughs> you know, because they've all got like really separate <laughs> traits to yeah, each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, and you know, it would have been like the elite, that would be an, a true elite <laughs> tight end right there. Between so all we them. had this discussion, and let's bring it up again because we had a little bit of Twitter beef between us earlier. It's quite funny. You will go in Michael Mayer as tight end one, and I'm going Dalton Kincaid. Why are you saying that? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. He's, he's got a brittle back. Make this guy, this guy be injured after three he's or four games. Cleared. Cleared. Mm, yeah, man. doesn't matter to me that mate. Doesn't matter. He, this guy, this guy's in got injuries, and Michael May is the, the best. The, he's, he's, he's just the best for me. He's just the best. Uh, he's just the best tight end in the in the draft this year. So, yeah, is it Koontz? Is it Koontz as well as a tight end from Old Koontz, Dominion? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable him. Extremely athletic. Very, very high RAS score. Um, you know, he was 
he's got unbelievable size as well, and he, I mean, mm -hmm. he, he's blocking is the the suspect part of the you know of the whole see, operation. See, this is it. You see, you, for me, you need a tight end who can do both and both yeah. well. And I mean, I mean, catching, running routes, so really three things, and also blocking. If, if if you haven't got a guy who can do all three to a high level, then you haven't really got a real true weapon because the problem is. Is that as soon as you bring on, for example, if, if for our current guys at the moment, if you bring on um, Turner, for example, you know that he's a receiver, so yeah. your defense is going to go okay. He's going to make, he's going to do a run. You know, he's, he's going to do a route. So, so, so the no, the, the linebacker or the, or the DB is going to pick him up. See, what I mean, but if you've got a guy who can do both and both well, so if you've got the John Baines blocking, but then also the but also the the Turner, you know, kind of the catching, route tree, yeah. for example, tree, and catching. Yeah. Just imagine, just imagine how good that kind of tight end would be and how useful he would be because you don't know then are you doing a run play are you doing a pass play are you doing this because you know from the bad if the guy's a bad blocker you shouldn't really be asking him to block really should you yeah so right. see what I mean so, so it just makes it harder for the defense to know what we're going to do with this next play if you've got a tight end you can do both and both well yeah it's funny isn't it because I mean I've seen Koontz's, um comp to the NFL players was uh, Ertz, so is Zach Ertz, is it Zach Ertz? Is that his name? Yeah, Zach yeah, Ertz. saying that that's who he could be. And for me, he was a pro who was very good, you know, especially good at Philadelphia. His prime was very good. In his, his prime, prime, he was an exceptional player. So if mm -hmm. you could get something like that in maybe the fifth, sixth round, you know, even the fourth, I'd take him well, in. It's, well, it's well, going to well, be well, a very, forget. very good Yeah, well, don't forget this player. guy was going to go undrafted until the combine. Yeah, I know, I know. Because how many old, I mean, how many true old Dominion players get drafted? Not many. Well, I think there's talk, there's talk of a guard in Old Dominion who's pretty good, who may get drafted. There's obviously talk of Koontz getting drafted. And that's probably the only two Old Dominion players I can think of, apart from Taylor Heineke, obviously. Um, <laughs> but he wasn't drafted previous, either. But he wasn't drafted, you know what I mean? So <laughs> you're absolutely right. Yeah. But I yeah. do think we have some special talent in this tight end room, and Amani Rogers could probably be the answer. I was very I think, impressed. I very think impressed he's the one. Him. He's the wild card, I think. Mm. Because you know, he looked really good, really sharp until yeah, he got yeah, hurt. And then you're thinking, ah, oh, okay. So is it just a, a couple of good games? Or is it actually is is, is the real deal? And we're gonna have to find out hopefully this year, you know. So So here's another one then that we I'd like to ask you as well, because obviously a lot love to get your thoughts on this as well. And it's been been crossing my mind. Rico talked earlier about having only three million worth of cap space in, and we need a projected mm -hmm. probable nine to sign all of our um draft picks as they are and we've heard oh trade back trade back if you trade back further you're going to incur more cost because you need to pay more players to sign on looking at this i mean this is the other thing you've got to think is you when we're when we're going to a 90 man roster it's absolutely fine you know what i mean but when you take it down to that 53 and as we spoke about before on a couple of shows ago it's now one cut isn't it it's down you've mm -hmm. got 53 mm -hmm. that's it you know, so mm -hmm. you can hold the 90-man roster right down till the end of the preseason game, the last end of preseason game. Where do you go then at left guard? Because we talked about it briefly there, and we've got Norwell, who wasn't talked about by Ron Rivera. Obviously, he said it was a straight-up competition between Silly Charles and Chris Paul. Now, also, we've got guards out in the draft. Um, I'm really liking Steve Avila. Um, you know, as a guard, I think he's an exceptional player. Very I good, think he's yeah. plug and play. You can put him can straight play in center as well. And mm -hmm. exactly, he's got that positional flex to pay center as well. Nick mm -hmm. Gates, we know, has played left guard before in the past in the NFL, but he's likely to be our starting center. We know, obviously, um, through the grapevine, we've heard that Chase Rudier is probably on his way out um, and will most likely be a post June 1st cut to save us even more money. But that money's not going to be there straight away for us to do. So you could cut Norwell, as we've said before, and that gives you the enough money to pay your entire draft class. So maybe that's where they're going to go with it. Or they have six mil. Was it six mil post June? Five. Is that yeah, five, five is five I think post June? I think I think you save uh, three and a half million now if you cut him immediately. Post okay. June first, it was five. Yeah. So Okay. You could wait, but I think already Bobby McCain's been designated as a first post -June, June first cut, even though he's already signed for the Giants. Um, okay. So he is already one of our post uh, post June first cut, and you can only do two. Is that so right? It'll be interesting. Two. Yeah. So there's only a limit. Two. Okay. So you could be. Really so what you're probably going to do then? What you're going to do? It all depends what he's going to do with the draft. It really yeah. is. If if they go out early and get and hit a high level guard, then you know for a fact Norwell's going to be cut the same day. Yeah. So, but but 
the thing is as well, normally I'd say, oh yeah, Nick Gates will play left guard. Well, the thing is, on his first interview, he, was center. To sign yeah. he said he's been told he's going to play centre. So if that's the case, then it looks like Chase Rooley is going to be the one who's going to be the odd man out. You know, so... Uh, but again, if if he's post junior, it's like ten mil. If it's before that, it's something like seven. Yeah. You know. Now again, yeah, you could cut him now, get your seven mil plus the two million you've already got left. That pays your draft, your draft, yeah. your draft team, your draft class. So there's definitely ways, the ways of mean to doing it. But again, for me, it's like it all depends what they do in the draft. But if they leave it the way it is right now and they don't draft the guard, especially the high, uh, the higher picks, you're thinking, oh, but he's definitely mm-hmm. going to be a starter. It's gonna for me. I'll be. I think Chris Paul is going to be the the, the actual favourite to be the yeah, starter. I do too. I, do too. I think Sadiq Charles. The problem is with Sadiq is that he you no. Know, he's, obviously, he's a nice guy. Everyone everyone loves him around the place. He wouldn't be here for four years if he wasn't. However, he's injury prone all the time. He can't stay healthy, man. So there's not. So there's no point in having that if you got if you got a guy who's always injured and you've got three centres at the moment who's always injured. It's a problem. It's a big problem. So so for me. You've got to, you've got to give it to Paul, and to be fair, Paul did play quite well considering you know his first game against Dallas. So protecting yeah, Powell. so totally yeah. totally agree with you. Well, we've got a few more questions here to finish off. Then Scouse, um, we've got the, uh, Ty T Mac, obviously great supporter of our show, great supporter of all the podcasts out there, really active yep. on Twitter. So shout out to you, my man. He said, "Jamin has took a big step the, last year. What would you like to see from him this year?" Well, continued improvement, really. I mean, obviously, the game is slowing down for him now. So so you can tell he's getting better. He's not always in his own head as much. And I think that's very, very important. That becomes more natural and second nature to him. Um, and I think, obviously, an extra year's experience, is, is gonna, it's, he's just going to keep improving that area. For me, I want him to be, I want him to be the actual blitzer. If we are going to blitz from the mm-hmm. linebackers, I want him to be doing it rather than covering corner to corner all the time. You know, sideline to sideline, corner to corner. Um, but again, that's on Del Rio and what he wants to do with his with his, uh, his his blitzers at the time. But but for me, that's what he that that's what he's best at. You know how fast he is. Hit, see the quarterback, hit the quarterback, and I think that's just the best way to keep it. So keep you want him to play almost he could like try and play a bit more, Mike, as well. You could yeah. try and you know, give him the green dot a bit more. That's where he I did have a couple of games it. last year. So I'll do maybe a few more games with that if he's yeah, doing do you, the, if he's doing well with it. Do you, think Cody it, you know, think, do you think Cody Barton's been? I think he's a very good player. He just needed time, and and the problem is today's NFL. If you're a first rounder, do you expect to hit the ground running? Yeah. It, it doesn't matter what position you are. You expect it. You expect it to be hitting the ground running nowadays, and that was just the unfortunate thing with with Damon Davis that he needed he needed a year or two to sort himself out because he only had one year starting in college. Exactly, and it takes time. We know. We know. It takes time to adjust. Funny, bro. Um, funny me. Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Can you hear me now? Nothing. Mm. Right. Well, this is interesting. Um, try and unmute myself. How about now? Can you try me now? I can hear you. I've yeah, got you yeah, absolutely yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Sorry mate, about yeah, that, yeah. dude. Mm-hmm. We will edit this out. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if you lost, you lost it there or I, I lost it there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'll be, I'll be able to edit this out. Don't worry, man. It's fine. So, yeah, I'm just thinking there on Jamie. Do you think Cody Barton's been brought in just to um, play that Mike position then? Or do you think it's. Well, I think all, that's what he wants that? to play. That's what he wants mm. to play, isn't it? And I think that was one of the main reasons why he came here. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's only he's only a, a um, he's a free agent. He's only a one year deal. You know, it's kind of like I reckon it'll be shared. I really do, unless Barton really really impresses in in in, in you know, the off season workouts and and they really believe that he could be the actual Mike the, the starter at Mike every time. Then fair play, but um, but I think unless unless you have that, I think it's going to be a competition between those two, and I think you're going to have probably half and half, barring injuries, obviously, you know. I think they'll probably two, share it. Two more questions then, Scouts, to finish this off. And these are two mega questions from Mike Allen on Twitter. Really appreciate you, Mike, for reaching out to us again, as always. Huge support of the show and former guest. So, uh, yeah, thank you for uh, putting these one in. Yep, he says, on. how deep in the playoffs does Riverboat Ron need to go for his time at the helm to be seen as an overall success? I'll let you. Do you want to go with that first, or do you want me to go with that first? I don't mind yeah, either I'll way. I'll go. I'll go first. Yeah, I go think. Ahead, man. I mean, every season, I'm always saying minimum, 
the minimum requirement is playoff spot. Anything below that isn't good enough. But but for Ron to, to become an actual, you know, he's definitely seeing the improvement now. It's, it's took a long time to build this roster, et cetera, et cetera. Dealing with all the crap outside. He needs to win at least one playoff game. It's 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 it's, it's and don't forget this year we've got a very hard schedule. The teams we yeah. play are a lot more difficult than last year. So if we can somehow get to the playoffs this season against the harder teams and then win one, as in win at least one game minimum, then yeah. Th- then yeah, then I you do. think, okay, we're on the right, we're on the right lines. I'm just mm-hmm. sticking wrong, personally. I, I agree with you. I mean, I look at the strength of schedule and think, how is this a fourth place schedule? I just got no it's idea. Brutal, isn't it? isn't it of, yeah, honestly, it's crazy. I mean, on, on honest, honestly, if you go back, have a real realistic think. Look last year at people's records. Look at what they've done in the off season throughout the NFL in their teams, and say to yourself, how many wins are we honestly going to get? I, I, I think seven, and that's me. But honestly, and I'm I'm trying to be optimistic and say ten. But I can't see how it is. And obviously, again, as Jesse said last week, and as you've said previously, it all boils down to the quarterback. Unfortunately, winning games is going to boil down and it's going to fall on Sam Howe's shoulder. Now, we've seen reports today saying that Sam Howe is definitely the answer. They're going to go with Sam Howe. There's no question of, of, of a doubt that that's who they're going with. Yeah, I agree with that. Going back to Mike's question then, for Riverboat Ron, yeah, I agree with you, Scouts. I think he has to win a playoff game. He has to. He has to win at least one playoff game. I think that's it. And I don't want to see us backdoor sneaking into the playoffs. No, no, we're we're looking good going in there. Eight eight and eight, you know, and then you might sneak past the Titans. It's got to be a 10-win season, even against the harder schedule teams. I agree. It has to be at least a 10-win season. With one playoff win, I mean, we, who's obviously who's going to win the South? Are we looking at Carolina? Are we looking at Tampa Bay? Probably going to be one of them. And are you going to? To be fair, I'm probably looking at Carolina. Yeah, are you going to sneak past Carolina? Do you know what I mean? I, it I depends. Don't I mean, well, it depends on who they pick up at QB. Obviously, that's a, a yeah. Well, a big but, one there, but isn't it? for me, they're going to go with the, the short guy. Bryce Young, yeah. Bryce Young. So, mm. uh, if, and what I've heard recently as well is that, you know, um, Houston are two, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, CJ Stroud's agent is the same agent as the Sean Watson. Oof. So, Houston don't want to pick him. So, people yeah. are saying now that Houston might actually trade out of two. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah, I've heard that they might and trade it's because of that. And, it's eight, because, yeah. and people are saying it's because of the, they don't want another Deshaun Watson problem and all so the then, shit that to deal with. They're, they're going to have a suitor there, though, really. I mean, because the oh, Cardinals yeah, at the moment, I mean, I know we've gone off topic here, Mike, but on <laughs> the Cardinals uh, the Cardinals will look and they'll say, do you know what? We're at three. This is a prime position to trade out of. We don't need a quarterback. Yes, we can get the best defensive talent on the, on, you know, on the market, but do we really, you know, I mean, if Will Anderson Jr. or Jalen Carter are the top two that they're looking at there, realistically, though, they will they will accept trade trade talks for that. If you're the Colts right now, are you sitting at four and going, right, well, do I go to three? Or does someone leapfrog me and go to two? Because if you have the opportunity to take one of them top two quarterbacks, you know, in Shroud or Bryce Young, whichever way that I could the definitely go, see. I could Colts definitely could see Carl's going to two. I could definitely see it. Yeah, I could see it too. Uh, because, th- I mean, CJ Stroud is what I think mm-hmm. they really want because that's an Andrew Luck kind of mm-hmm. type of quarterback. Do you know what I mean? Tall, you know. I heard Jim Irsay is in love with Will Levis. He, he really likes him. Oh, um, well, and again, I, I don't think, and I don't think they go it, Anthony Richardson there. It's too well, much. Of well, the if risk. that's the case, if that's the case, then, then Will Levis probably will be there before. So they might not have to go up. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be a tough one. This because, is another another random okay. quick question then for you. And I know we're getting massively into draft talk here. Do you think four quarterbacks go in the first 10 picks? Easy. Yeah, easy. So then someone's got a fall. So if that's I've the case bet. and four go... I've put a bet on, 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 on Sky. I've put a bet on Sky bet. One to four is going to be quarterback. Woo! One to four. So you're then banking on probably... Cardinals trading out then, aren't you? Because they've got to go with Kyler Murray purely for the money. And plus, so, I mean, don't forget, I mean, he's, he's don't forget he's out for the half the half of next season as well. True. Kyler. But I can't so, see them. Are they going to pick up a but, 
No, they're not. They're not. They're not going to trade for a first, like a, a number three, a quarterback. They're not going to do that because there's too much money invested in, as you said. But they can. They'll definitely trade out. Hundred percent. Someone's going to come up there for three. Uh, you know, as I say, and and if Houston don't want the quarterback, because it might be, it might be, um, you know, uh, CJ Stroud that they don't really mm. want because of the Watson issue. If that's the case, if that's true, then they'll probably come out of it as well. But uh, people only go up. That high a in a draft mate. for a quarterback. Yeah. To see what so I mean. I'm looking so... then at what teams are we looking at there then? Because I honestly don't think it's us. I mean, you could say the Raiders no. possibly, but 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 they've got Garoppolo. So are they going to sit a first round quarterback for two years? Tampa Bay, they've got. Bacon I mean, Anthony, I mean, I mean, Anthony Richardson could be a good one for um. Yeah, yeah. For the Raiders, two years on, on the bench, learning from Garoppolo. Do you know what I mean? So, Bolt, so that'd be Bolt really, really good. Ravens. Well, yeah, I mean, it, we, we don't know what's going on with uh, with Jackson at the moment, do we? So, no, that's uh, true. You know, and they and they could come up. That's what I mean. Uh, uh, so, you know, Green Bay uh, are at Green Bay are at fifteen. Yeah, I mean, they, they they actually believe in love, though, don't they? I know they so, do. I know they so do. So I can't see them going up, but there's definitely, I mean, there's definitely at least two teams who want to come up for a quarterback. I think mm. that's not, a really not interesting everyone, bet. That's yeah. Guys. It's, it's, to be fair, it's not even great odds. <laughs> right, okay. That's smart. That's, that's smart. It's, it's like so, what, six to one, seven to one, something like that. That's last okay. question then from Mike. He says, what is our realistic hopes and dreams <laughs> over the next 10 years? Apart from me winning the lottery and obviously moving to moving to DC and watching every but game but what, but or charring real... a flight. I don't know. How can, how, can, how can you have realistic hopes and dreams? I know, Isn't that like... I know. It's not like contradicting each other because oh, the hopes and dreams like <laughs> I want I want everything, you know. I want <laughs> <Oxymoron. Yeah. laughs> But yeah, but I get I get what you're trying to say. I know I think, what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, and the and the hope and, and the hopes and dreams is we want to see a Super Bowl. Yeah, we oh, do. That's the whole that, that, that's the end game of what the whole sport. Only one team can win it, and, and we've got to win it. Simple as that, you know, and, and, and nothing less is good enough, really. Um, going forward, but that's going to take us a couple of years still. You know, it's not going to be. I, I can't see us being it this year, even though the NFC t- technically, as as a conference, is is quite mm-hmm. easy on the quarterback. If you think about mm-hmm. how bad the quarterbacks are in the NFC, you know, there's not there's not many top draw. There's Jalen Hurts and who else? Yeah, Derek struggling Carr. after that. No, see I what mean, I mean? Like, see what I mean? Like, could, it's, it's could, not even that good. Lamar. You could tell you Lamar Jackson, but he's but he's not. But he's not in the NFC. Oh yeah, true. Duh. That's what um, I'm saying. NF- NFC side of it. There's not many good quarterbacks. Who? AFC's loaded. NFC hasn't is, got none. Who else? There's is many. Top tier? No, Dak Prescott. Mm, don't know about that. No, bang average man. Bang average yeah, at best. Um, you know, this, this is it. You see, you know, this is the um. So the that's, retired, all, that's why I do. Yeah, yeah exactly. Brady's so, gone, and and who's gone yeah. there? Um, Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield, uh, he's a stop over gap, so you could you'd say Stafford. You'd say you'd say Stafford. Well, that's what I'm saying. Stafford's a good a good quarterback. I'll give him his. Yeah, and he, and he could say Goff. Uh, maybe, yeah. I mean, because Goff had a good season last year. Yeah. See what I mean? So, so it's like, but they're not like. Brent they're not like oh my god! There, aren't we? Yeah, we're not going. Oh my god! This is Pat Mahomes are playing. You know what yeah, I mean? This I know, is not. I know. This is not. You know, Josh Allen. This is not Joe Burrow. This is. See what I mean? Like you, AFC, absolutely. Yeah, killing it. Unbelievable amount of quarterbacks here. There isn't that many, and that's why, and that's why it's still fair game. If we can somehow get through, I know we got hard divisions this year, but if we can get through, if Hal can be just top fifteen as a quarterback, we'll be laughing. Yeah, yeah, I agree, agree completely with you. So my realistic dreams and hopes then for the next ten years, I want to see ownership that doesn't get involved in anything on the field. Stay away from what we're doing on the field. Let the on-field people and the football people do football. And to be honest with you, I think the team that we've got in the Harris group, I really believe in them. And I think that they are have the best interests of the team at heart. And they know what they're doing. They're savvy businessmen. They've owned sports before. I mean, Rails hasn't, I get that. But Harris has uh, owned sports franchises before. He still is owning sports franchise. So his track record is there. He doesn't get really involved. Sign the checks. Do what you need to do. You know, I don't mind checks and balances against Get players and things like that. Get that stadium. Get in the DC. stadium done in DC. Then I want to see a Super Bowl played at the stadium. That's something I want to see in the next ten years, a hundred percent. And I want to see us in it. Yeah, now normally <laughs> when years. you get a new a new stadium, it's part of the course, isn't it? That within the first two, three to five years, you see, um, you see that happening. 
And then, yeah, us. I want to see us highly challenging deep in the playoffs over the next probably five years or so. And then eventually, you know, get into the dance and winning it. That's where I want to see. I want to see another Lombardi in the trophy cabinet. That's exactly what I want to see. But yeah, I, I agree. I think this mm-hmm. window of opportunity that we have now with the young talent that we've got, we have probably got three years. We've got to capitalise, man. Again. We've got yeah. to capitalise on the Howell contract. Agreed. Or or another rookie quarterback contract if they're better. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but, totally but, agree. As I say, forget about Hendon Hooker. Mm-hmm. Even though he's good. He is, he is mm-hmm. good. He is good, yeah. He's not going to be ready this season anyway. His knee's not... He's, he's still rehabbing that knee. Um... And Tennessee, there. and Tennessee play the most quarterback friendly offense in any college football at all. So Ari right? stat, yeah. Ari stats, pat, you know, just panned a little bit. I, I'm not, I'm not saying. Don't forget as well, you know, he's 25 as well, you know. Yeah, he's quite old. He's isn't not, he he's a, not, he's not yeah. a young lad. I mean, you know, Sam Howell, I think it's 22, mm-hmm. and he's been in the NFL for a year already. Do you see what I mean? And he played three full years at college. This is why. This yeah. is why I think he, he's primed. He's pr- he's prime. That's why I'm, that's why I'm all in on him. Really, he's prime. To, he's prime to actually just nail it. Yes, yeah, so you've got to think year he... three. He's going to be that's that should be him. That should be where you've got to be. You don't need that sophomore slump because he hasn't got that. This is technically almost his rookie year. So next yeah. year, you would say, okay, that's probably where he should have a bit of a recess. But we haven't seen that in quarterbacks that have come out in the last three or four years. They get oh, it the, almost. The... The special ones, yeah. You don't, you don't, ones. you don't really yeah, see it mean. too much. I mean, you know, you're Jalen Hurts. I mean, he didn't have a great second season, but he's a second round but, pick. But look at him now, yeah. But look at him now. He's just got himself a nice. He's got himself the bag, hasn't he? So yeah, massive deal, uh, massive deal. 180 mil guaranteed. Nice, Ooh. you know, two fifty five or five years. Yeah. You know, but Bet Patrick Mahomes on honestly, his ten year contract, sir. Uh, honestly, a bit annoying now, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. Just have a look, mate. Just have a look how it's worked out in um, Jalen Hurts' contract. Because yeah, it's, it's so some... smart how they've done it. It's unbelievable. Is it something like eight million cap this year? Which is I think, just I think it's it's six million this year. Wow. And they're paying him like like twenty odd mil as as a, a upfront signing fee for this year. And then mm-hmm. it, it, they call it a double option or something. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent on it. But the way they worked it, it's like you you, you pay like a signing bonus is pro rata over the four over three years or four years. And then mm-hmm. what do you do again? They'll do it again kind of in third year to go third three year, four year, three year, and fifth year. So you can do it again, you see. It's not just a one off. Wow. You can actually do it so the signing bonuses can be staggered across a five year deal like that. So nice. they are they are that's how that's how uh, New Orleans get away with it and all that because they right, do okay. that type of thing. So and no and they're doing it. So you know Fair play, but it's like even next yeah. season is something like twenty million. Is cap it? It's not even that bad, you know. It, wow. it's, it's only when you start hitting that kind of fourth year that's where it really goes up to about forty or fifty, no sixty. But they'll they'll, they'll just bash that into a signing bonus, mate. That's what they'll do then, yeah, and then they'll be back they down to like say twenty. They'll, re- they'll restructure in two years if he's having a good time. If they're this, they're still at the dance or there or thereabouts. They'll be like, right, come on, Jalen, let's restructure this. Let's, and all they'll do is restructure it and change it into a signing bonus, as you said. I mean, who doesn't want 30 million in the hand straight away? <laughs> yes, please, I'll take that. You know what I mean? Because yeah. as you said, you don't want maybe as a quarterback or as an NFL player, you don't want that. You want it all pretty much guaranteed, but you want it all in the signing bonus because you don't know if you're going to break your leg tomorrow. But these, you know what I mean? But these guys are multi, multi millionaires. And that's when you're, why they're all when you're at that guarantee. Position. It's all about the guaranteed money. It's not that's why Lamar Jackson's like that, isn't he? Yeah. Exactly that. Yeah. Well, what I, what I, what I listened to, um, I listened um, to this cap guy. I can't remember his name on top of me. Um, but he's on no, like you know, um, John Cam. Yeah. Is it Joe Cam- Corey? Is it Joe Corey? Oh, uh, over the cap. Yeah. 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 He's very. That's the guy. Very. Good, I was yeah. listening to him yesterday, and he was like saying Lamar Jackson was getting shaft on his on his contract. It wasn't because it was it wasn't fully guaranteed. It was because. Basically, some of that money gets guaranteed for injury. So it's not technically guaranteed at that point of signing, but if he gets injured, it, it becomes guaranteed some parts. And basically, he's only getting something like 17, something like 17 million for, 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 for guaranteed injury. And think about it, he's injured every year. Yeah. So, so there's no way anyone's going to sign that, is he? That's what he's <laughs> it isn't about the, the huge money, the overall bit. It's all about the guarantees. And that's what everyone's about, man. Yeah, NFL is different to the rest. It is different. It is different. 
Well, that's us pretty much wrapped up for the week. So thank you for joining me, Scouts, as always, on the show. Thankful to Rico from Street Scores coming on with with us. Um, Massive, massive uh, shout out to him for doing that. This is obviously our third week of the American takeover, um, US takeover um, of the show. Next week, Mm -hmm. we'll probably do something quite different. Might be a bit of a longer one if you want to stick around with us. But we will have a mock draft simulator and we'll probably go pick for pick having a look at what we do. Just the first um, round, though, isn't it? Just the first round and see what we do. We'll do a draft on draft night. How about that then, Scouts, eh? And then I will Sounds probably, like plan, be, man. probably be messaging you and FaceTiming you every two minutes when a, when a pick's in at one in the morning going on from there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's easy. See, for us, this is good because, you know, we, we, do our, we do our thing normally around 8, 8 p.m., probably, yeah. you know, our, our usual kind of recording time. So you spend an hour now and a bit on here doing that now and half, something like that. You know, they just, just nicely in just because the, I think the build up on Sky starts about Ooh. half 10, you know, 11, something like that. So. Yeah, yeah, something like that, I think. Yeah. So I'll leave us in quite I'll nicely. A watch. Mm. Right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us as always. We'll be back next week on draft day and then we can obviously discuss it the week after about who we picked, which will be quite interesting. Mm. Take care, everyone, and thanks again. Bye. <laughs>